place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Good morning, you beautiful, beautiful people. So this morning, and it's a snowy one outside, the job is to get this beast of a machine off the back of the van. It's going to take some doing because I think it weighs all of about six, seven, maybe even 800 kilos. The van's down. But I also bumped into my neighbour Andy, who's got the unit next door, and he turned the water off for me because the stopcock's in his unit, as you know. And quickly, I fitted a stopcock on this side of the wall. So, I think I might just take five minutes out this morning to get that there sink plumbed in, and then pipe the water across. And then at least we can use that sink for cleaning and whatnot, because I suspect that as I take this apart, some of the components are gonna require a little bit of servicing, and then on reassembly, it will be a-okay. So you can see I fired up there and popped on that little blue stopcock and then I have to fit a T-piece to the black pipe connecting the black and blue and stopcock all together and then on this side it just remains for me to connect those hose tails at the back of the sink there you can just see them right under there uh, to the bottom of the taps and then we should also have a functioning water heater hot water in it is going to be a luxury particularly today. One or two leaks here and there. So what happened was I asked tool station for a 15mm by half inch flexi pipe, two of them, and look what I got here. 15mm by three quarter. So I've had to really prat around underneath to make it fit, hence the leakage. But you'll see the light is on, so we have hot water and the drainage is looking tidy. No leaks apart from just that fannying about and I also had to change a fitting up there I had a 15mm brass socket and it had a split down it, would you believe that? but yeah both taps working what I have to do though is swap these around because that's the hot it's no big deal operation roller removal is well underway these sections here are the protective cases for the gearing either side of the of the roller this is one side so this has freed the top pinch roller by removing this big section here and if we come across to the other side knocking my spanner on the floor on the way then you can see we've got the motor the chain drive the main drive pulley and then the large gears and then this top pinch roller comes into this great big gear uh, because I've loosened this other um, I guess it's a bushing or some type of well it's not a, it's not a bushing because it's just steel to steel but whatever it is big hinge plate so hopefully I'll be able to lift out this section with the cogs either end and lighten the load That's literally like a bloody train axle. That is unbelievably heavy. I mean, here's my foot for scale. So midway through the disassembly, we've got the big shaft out there with the gears on. We've got the other roller out and the motor. And then I noticed on this uh, pulley, this gear, there's a split on two of these I don't know if you can if that's showing up 
so there's a crack on this casting so I'm thinking we're gonna have to figure out how to weld this back up before I actually put it together again but with it being cast I'm concerned I think it's cast iron I'm concerned about putting heat into it and causing more cracks and stresses but in the meantime I've run into a problem I can't get this key out so I'm going to try and fabric cobble some type of taper that I can hammer into there with this bolt and hammer it in hopefully pushing this keyway out this key out of the keyway so we'll give that a whirl Wonderful, got it. So the gears moved backwards, but the keyway's still stuck in the shaft. So I think I just need something to peen underneath here and ping it up, and it should come out, but that moves now slightly. Now that's a key. Holy man. There we go, flat pack. Sheet metal roller folks, it's all out, it's all in its component parts, I need to do some work on that wheel, there is a crack there, I've just been watching Chucky 2009 on YouTube and how to repair cracks in cast iron, I believe that's cast iron, it could be cast steel but I'm not sure yet until I uh, get the grinder onto it. But I think I'm going to use 316 stainless and TIG that joint together before we reassemble. Well, in fact, I'll reassemble 90% of this machine. Uh, but obviously, I'm not going to be using it with that crack on. So I'm absolutely freezing my nuts off. I'm going to get myself a coffee and start to put this thing back together. I've had a fair bit of a game on here folks, so I'm welding up this cast iron piece of uh, piece of gear, this, this cast iron gear and I'm taking it really slowly, like half inch sections at a time, doing a bit there, letting it cool, doing a bit there, letting it cool, turning it over, doing a bit there and that's not porosity you can see, that's peening, I've been peening it like mad and try and take the strain out of the weld. I can't see any cracks appearing yet, just a little bit of sort of, it's, it's not wetted in on one of these sides quite as well as it could. Yeah, I mean it's welded, it's definitely welded if you, if we can get the angle right for you to see, but uh, that's probably the worst part so I'm going to have to go over that again. I have ground one or two bits back out where it didn't work quite as well. But I mean this for instance, I'm really quite pleased with that. And then if we spin it round, same on the other side, slowly, slowly catch a monkey. It's not completed yet. You can see there are still a few bits there that uh, I need to start filling in. And I V'd it all out, I V-grooved it up so I wasn't welding over the crack. I cut a big V out and I could almost see through the metal. So I think it's going to hold, fingers crossed. So there is the repair folks. And in the cold light of day, you can still see one or two little hairline cracks in there. They're not cracks, that's a bit of porosity in the weld. One, two, three, four or five little bits there. Because obviously I was starting and stopping, starting and stopping. That's why it didn't wet in quite as well. Not joined up quite as nice, but yeah, you can't really see them. 
but trust me there are one or two little hairline cracks on there have a look at the back you can see bigger gap there a bit more porosity on that side there but for the sake of putting more heat into her I'm just gonna leave it at that it looks like quite a good a good job if you ask me considering that it was a split and when I when I cut it out there was almost my fingers width gap in there and it's cast you know I'll take that any day of the week folks no more cracks have appeared in the perimeter or around the center so I think I got lucky with this one getting very close guys getting very close to getting it put back together and uh, this is all the sprocket work <laughs> yeah that is the size of it next to my head it's crazy isn't it uh, so that's the one I've just welded that spins and obviously drives the other two gears and then that top roller comes across here and that drives the bottom roller from this side with these two these two big uh, mother foes so the next job for me now is to get the three phase motor which is there and get that installed back on it goes on that end actually just on there see you Gem right Gem's gone she's gone to uh, work at the pub I've just put my welding gloves and stuff in the in the washing machine I'm kind of hoping that they'll clean up because I ended up getting oil on them and I don't really want to be TIG welding do I with oily gloves I don't think so I'll give them a wash anyway folks it's been a productive day for me we managed to get the roller off um, I do need to change the socket on the end of the plug because it is a 4 pin and all of my outlets are 5 pin so I'll have to do that sometime tomorrow but we should be able to see if it's running I need to sit down tonight and put together a steel order and then get that sent off to get some steel here ASAP so we can actually crack on and that reminds me I also need to order some tungstens and some more tips I could do with a new gun for the for the TIG actually a 17 uh, torch or whatever they're called because it's just a 9 at the minute so that's the job for tonight I'm going to just ram that inside myself and I will see you tomorrow. Cheers.